Welcome to Twisted Dice. <laughs> Welcome to Twisted Dice. I'm Darren, and today I'm going to be taking you through on how to make this look friggin' awesome on any one of your Warhammer 40k battlefronts. Um, for the Death Guard army, this cauldron is friggin' an awesome bit of train. Really love what Games Workshop have done with it. Some really cool designs. Now, if you haven't, if this is the first time you've seen this video, check out the first one because I talk you through on how to put all the lights and what type of lights to use for this. This video, I'm gonna be taking you through on how to make your model look absolutely friggin' stunning on the battlefield. So I'm gonna show you all the cool paint techniques on this. I'm gonna show you how to do all the cool weathering effects. I'm also gonna show you how to do the cool flame effects as well on the model. And let's put it this way. When you fill your army on the battlefield, you wanna make sure your army looks friggin' stunning, outstanding, and good. Joining us at Twisted Dice, following our videos, I'm going to be showing you how to do that on all your models, but also thinking, taking into consideration time. Time is a big factor when coming to paint any of your armies. If you want to keep up the, the meta, sometimes you don't have the luxury or the ability to paint to a Golden Demon. Um, but it's not Golden Demon standard by no means, but it is to a nice tabletop standard. But look, I'm, I'm judging it myself. It'd be really cool. If, you, if you're watching this back, drop some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this. Um, I really love the way it's come out and hopefully you guys and girls will as well. Let's get straight onto the video. And hopefully you've already hit that like and subscribe. Uh, and hopefully I'm gonna see you on another one. So first up, we're gonna be doing prime the model and we're gonna be using the surface primer, Israel Sand from Vallejo. So next up, we're gonna coat the model in flat earth. And now this is a Tamiya paint. Uh, so make sure when you do this, you've gotta make sure you use the Tamiya thinner. Uh, don't make the mistake of using the normal thinner. Uh, obviously it's just gonna clog this paint in your airbrush. So next up, we're gonna be using some flat earth from Tamiya again. Now with flat, now with the Tamiya paints, you can water these down using the Tamiya thinners, um, but they still come out quite nice. They've got quite a nice pigment to them. They are enamel paints, so you just gotta be careful that when you're airbrushing with these, they are very, very toxic. But that's the bottle that the Tamiya's come in. I just transfer them over to dropper bottles and it just stops the paint just drying inside the actual, in the actual lid of the actual jar. So next up, we're gonna be using the Contrast Plague Bearers Flesh. And again, just putting this through the airbrush with a little bit of airbrush thinner. Uh, and all we're gonna to try to do is just dark enough into the center of the yellow parts, and then maybe just randomly just put some other bits in other areas. 
so for the next stage anything that I wanted to be copper or silver I've painted them black so I've just gone back over now I've got a really awesome little technique for this going with like a contrast black or going with the black out of like the games workshop I always find it's a bit of a bit of a hassle so what I tend to do is with a bit of airbrush thinner and sorry with a little bit of airbrush prime black primer and a little bit of airbrush thinner I just put a couple of drops of this on my wet palette add a couple of drops onto the to the airbrush thinner onto the palette as well mix them together and then all I do is just apply that with the brush onto the model causes a primer it means that the pigments are quite thick so it means I can just go in there for just one coat and it gives me a nice black ready for the next stage so next up we're going to go with anything that's going to be copper we're going to be going in with the metal color or should we do the silver first ba -ba -bum. yeah we're going to go with the copper first so this is so next up we're going to be using the copper from the metal color range uh, it's meant for the airbrush but it's really good using the actual paintbrush itself So for this part, all the copper parts are done, and I ain't gonna lie, that was the most painstaking bit of the actual model itself. Uh, it pretty me pretty much took me the whole episode of Wonder Wonder Vision <laughs> to get that part done, but it's done. That's the main bit. So next up, we're gonna be going in with lead bell chat, and we're gonna start covering up the next parts. So now all the uh, so now all the copper and the silvers are all done. It's quite blinging, quite bright, um, but don't worry about that so much. So the next stage we're going to go for is the skulls. So we're going to go to the contrast range and we're going to go in with the skeleton horde. It's quite a nice little colour. I'm not going to mix anything with this. It's just going to be straight from. I'm just going to go straight from the pot, and we're going to apply that over the skeleton parts themselves. Now I'll tell you up to yourself on where you go with this. Um, if you want to spend a bit more a bit more time, a bit more detail on it to make it look better, great. Uh, this is for me it's all about I've got to get this in get this done as soon as we can but make it look as cool as we can. Now while that's drying we're just going to get some uh, contrast pink and we're just going to put that in there. So next up we're going to be using more of the Screaming Skull but this time we're going to start dry brushing and we're going to start thinking about doing the the skulls on the actual model itself. So just putting a dump of Screaming Skull onto the thing and we're just going to take off all the excess, a lot of the excess paint off my dry brush and all we're going to do is I'm going to do a downward motion just on the top. So I'm just going to go back and forth. Now, the reason why I'm going back and forth on this part is because I don't want to lose all the detail there. Again, if you choose on your if you choose yourself to spend a little bit more detail time on this and do a little bit more detail, then it will look a lot more better. But again, for myself, just thinking about time, and time is a big, big factor. So now giving it a good couple of coats, you can see this really starting to come through quite nicely. So just to make that, just to pop just a little bit more, we're going to be going in with some dead white. Now I'm trying to take keep this painting guide as best I can to Games Workshop paints, um, but I find dead white is just a it's just a much it's just a much nicer white. Again, I'm not cleaning the 
the dry brush so there's going to be some screaming skulls still left on this um, but that's fine because that's just going to help just bring the dead white up so just brighten up the actual uh, screaming skull so again just going to go with a light brush I'm just thinking about just the, the parts that's more highlighted that's it nice quick and easy um, again if you want to take a little bit more time you know really work go to work onto those skulls you know you can really do some really cool effects but this is just trained so we just want this quick dead easy um, and that's it so first up we've used screaming pink to do all of the all the pipe work on the actual model um, screaming pink is quite a nice vibrant color to start off with so a little bit of water I'm gonna mix the two together and then on the other side we've just done the same so we cover this flesh we just mix that with a little bit of water and then all I'm gonna do is just gonna pull that in like so and as you'll see that's where we're gonna go up to so start off with there and then I build this up in a couple of layers. Just going to figure this up just a tad. So I'm going to put a little bit more screen pink in there. Now an easier way to get through this, because I was trying to get through those lines, is a little bit of pain about it. So with a dry brush, um, I'm just going to add a little bit of Empress Children onto the palette. So I've just gone from Empress Children and then just dry brushed up. And then with the Empress Children on there, I'm just going to add a little bit of the Kevlish Flesh. Just going to add that on there. Mix that together like so, and with a bit of tissue, we're going to take off all the excess paint. Now, all I'm looking for at the moment is just to catch uh, top parts of the actual. <clears throat> just want to capture the top parts of the. Um, the fleshy parts. And we're going to work this into it. So back and forth, back and forth until we get a nice smooth coat. I'm just going to go Kevlish Flesh just on its own. Okay, take off the excess. I'm just going to go with a light, very, very light coating. Not, nothing too major. Focus upon then add some water to that mixture, and then we're just going to smooth this off. So, just to smooth that part down there, we're just going to basically turn that into a glaze, and we're just going to do a couple of layers just to bring that in so it just looks nice and tidy. And of course, using the hairdryer just to speed this part up. So 
So the next part we're going to think about is all around these bits here. So next stage, we're going to go with some fluctuous pink from the contrast and some screaming pink as well. Uh, so first up, we're going to go with a little bit of airbrush thinner. A little bit of airbrush thinner. And then a little bit of contrast. So next up, we're going to carry on doing these parts here, but we're going to use some of the Vallejo color range, only because I find that the we've got some really nice oranges already there. So we're going to start off with uh, hot orange, and this is Vallejo Game Air. But we're not going to use it for the airbrush, we're just going to use this straight onto the palette. Then we're going to go in with some clear orange, again from the Vallejo range. So next up, I'm going to just add a little bit of icy yellow into that. Just try blend that. So we're just going to think about what's going to be poking out through there. Now in my head, I'm thinking eyes. I'm thinking, let's go with something that's actually looking back, or whatever they're looking at. So we're going to be going in with uh, Wraith Bone first of all. And then on the wet palette, I'm just going to mix that in with water. So we're going to carry on doing the eyes. So what we're going to do next is just going to go with some dead white. I'm just going to put that towards. So for this next stage, we're going to work make a glaze. So we're going to go with some glaze medium. I'm going to put a drop of that onto my palette. 
then going to go with a drop of just plain plain water. Then, because we're trying to stick to the green theme, we're going to give them eye, green eyes. So we're going to go with some warp lightning contrast. We don't want a lot of this. We just want to just a tad down. And then we're just going to mix that. Oops, that should be like a nice... Now, if you have any of the... Um, oh, what was it called? The Way Witch is Green. Uh, the glaze from Games Workshop. That would be ideal for this bit. So let's just make sure it's what we want. Yeah, nice and opaque. So what we want to do now... This is going to take a couple of... A couple of layers. But I want us to... Get some depth into this, so just make them work. So there, we're going to go have the eye that way. Up there. then we just want a drop of black so for this instance I've just got some black ink just to hand all we're going to do is put a drop just where we want the center of the pupil to be so in the case we're going to be going there And there. Again, these are just quick eyes. They're going to look really effective because what we'll do afterwards, we'll put some. Um, we can put some uh, white. So we can put some glaze over the top of them. Um, so once we've finished, once we've done all the matte varnish all over the top of them, we can put some gloss varnish over the eye pupils themselves, make them stand out. And that's it. Nice. Easy eyes, uh, didn't take too long at all. And that's it, just looking upon speed. So if you're actually looking at that on the battlefield, that really stand out and pop. So for the next stage, we want to start dumbing down some of the high, the really, really shiny metal. So we're going to go in with non oil next. So we've got some, we're going to be playing around with burnt umber, which is the an oil, but we're also using south store. So as you can see here, I've got two, I've got two bottom of some coke cans. So for the first one, it's just plain south store, and then the second one, we're just going to add a little bit of oil in, and we're going to mix these up. So the models themselves, I've completely done a gloss, a couple of, um, so the models themselves, I've put a uh, free three layers of gloss on top of it uh, and this is just to protect it for what we're about to do next so as you can see I'm mixing this up to make a nice glaze and I think that's probably a little bit too thick let's get a little bit more a little bit more salsador in there So what we're looking for as I'm pulling that on I can just see it just swap so now to know if you've got this mixture right as I'm pulling that brush up you can see it just rolling down straight down so that's perfect this is a just kind of like a milky consistency 
Some prefer it a little bit thicker, some prefer it a little bit less. Um, but we're only really going to know until we start applying the paint on. So the model itself has got a couple of coats of gloss on it. And then all we're going to do now is we're just going to tap. around now if you notice I haven't painted the flies yet but I've got a really cool hopefully got a cool method to do for them next so we're just going to tap that in and with it being glossy the south the door should take the wheel gloss and just pull it all the way around Can just manipulate that to the way we want it to be. Benefits, the benefits of this, once you've done this and the actual paint's dried, you can go back in and just use the sound store to remove any excess um, wash, which is pretty cool. The only downside is it stinks to high heaven. So I don't always tend to use this. So we're going to bring that all the way around. So this is great for getting oil cracks. more this bit here that I'm really interested to see how this pounds comes out. Let's get some in there as well. It's quite a little bit of excess there so what we're going to do take a cotton bud, take some clean out, some clean south store and we're just going to rub some of that excess off. So now all the all the oils are dry and as you can see it's kind of looks quite filthy. So at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a cotton bud with just some plain sass door. We're just gonna take off some of the excess. And then we're just gonna just with the side of the brush, we're just gonna take off some of the excess oil. And this is the beautiful thing about this stuff. Only downside is it stinks to high heaven. Um, but it's not as bad as using some other stuff. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a little bit of grease to boost and just pop onto here. And then. So I'm going to put a bit of burnt umber down. Uh, I've also got some nice orange as well. So this is the orange hue. Again, all Winston and Newton colours. And we've also got some black as well. We've got a nice green as well. And hell, just for the fun of it, we've got a bit of purple. And then all we're going to do with an old brush, let's just take some of that purple and we'll pop it just there. And we'll put a bit, a little bit there, a little bit there, and a little bit there. I'm going to take some of the green. I'm just going to pop a little bit next to it. Bigger brush, what we're going to do is just go straight into the south store. And we're just going to run this straight down, like so. And this will give us a nice streaking effect. And then you can just tidy it up using that brush. Using that south door just to come on behind it. 
So that's if you want to put some colours into it. So let's go in with the let's go in with the oranges. So we're gonna put a little bit there, about there. Go there. And then we're gonna get some of the burnt umber. And we're just gonna put a couple little drops in. In and around. in there as well. Okay. Again, okay, straight into the salsa door. And what we're going to do is just going to push down. Just give out a little bit of and that's it. So you know, just keep going as much as you want to go. As, you know, go as dirty as you want to go on this. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more, and then I'll take you through to the next part. Okay, so the next part we. So I've given the model another coat of gloss varnish, and this is just to protect everything we've done so far. Uh, so with a bit more self store. We're going to start playing around with some pigments, and what we're going to start doing is weathering up the all the metal parts. So let's start off with start off with a brown pigment first of all. And again, we're going to go in with let's go in with this brush. Gonna do is gonna pop that around the, the breast. We're gonna do is gonna get some light rust as well. So the rusts I'm using are just ones from Games Workshop and also from Filet Hair as well, Blazio even. transferring that to the other side. South Storm, we're just gonna just take off some of that excess just a little bit. So we're going to give this a matte varnish. So we're going to give this a nice matte varnish now, um, just to bring it all back down, uh, and that will start bringing into the into the powders into it as well. So I've given this a matte varnish. So once the matte varnish is dried, we're now just going to pick up the flies, and we're just going to use a chrome from Vallejo, from Vallejo, or 
of Lejo, however you say it. I'm just going to pick out all the flies. So next up, what we're going to do is just going to just just slightly highlight the edge highlighting around all the metal parts. So it's just going to give it a little bit of character again. Again, totally in how much you want to do on this is totally up to yourself. Um, just find it just gives it breaks up just a tad. Of course, as this is being used, the rust will just be knocked off and you get the fresh parts of the metal start showing up again. So just around there. And just with the green contrast, so we're going to go with the warp lightning. We are just going to go over the, the bodies of the flies. Hopefully. still be able to see the reflective of the the silver coming through underneath so just like how bot, blue, uh, bot flies are you kind of get that metallic-y type look now normally flies are not bot flies are normally like a bluey metallic but I just want to stick the green on the bodies because we're going to go with blue on the wings and on the wings we're going to go I'm going to go with this one Okay, so next up we've got a bit of grease proof paper and we've got some clear resin. Now this stuff dries in UV light. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pour some little bits out like that. These are going to be like your flame effects. So if you want to do something fancy with it, should be enough. And a UV torch. help cure those. Would highly recommend wearing gloves for this next stage. So we're going to take the first bit. And we're going to pour some clear resin just on the tips of this. Do. We're going to pour into there like so. Let's get this so you can see it. Let's just take another step. So again, what we're going to do is just pour a little bit of resin onto there like so. And then we'll place that somewhere inside like Start to 
ça. So then for the door, what we're going to need to do on this part, we're kind of going to have to do usual grease, grease proof paper and get straight in with your torch. Next up, what we want to do is pull some of these lights through. So we're going to have from there. So we're going to put one of those lights just to that point there. Again, get the resin in so it'll hold it into place. And once the first one's in, get the next one so next one what we're going to try to do is pull that a little bit further down if we can give that a little bit longer to set and then the next one of course, totally up to yourself and what, what pattern you go for. Um, but we're going to go, for me, I'm going to have another one just about there. this lot. I'm just going to bend this into place so it just sits into the middle for when that goes on. Like so. Have that down with some ore. UV resin. And then we're going to start Turn this upside down. As I start to drip, should okay, start adding some texture to this now. So we just need some little dollops. where we need to do a pair of wires. Let's get 
another bit. I'm just gonna kind of pleat that. Let's just trim that down just a tad. That's it. So what we're going to do is just stick that back bit on and that is it. One furnace complete. So hopefully you found this guide quite easy and you're going to find this quite useful whether you use it for this project or whether you use it for future project projects. But as you can see adding those extra lights into this model really does make this model stand out and pop on the battlefield. Anyway thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this guide. Uh, if you like the content we're pushing out Twist Dice please do us a massive great favour by hitting that like and subscribe and hopefully I'll catch you again next Monday from 6pm.